Hello and welcome along to this week's edition of The Match as Real Madrid prepare for a local derby on Sunday evening. Getafe making the short trip to the Santiago Bernabeu. Sid Lowe joins me as ever to preview the game. And Sid, this on paper is a game that Madrid should win pretty comfortably. Yeah, I think it is. It's one of that handful of games over the course of the season, particularly at the Santiago Bernabeu, where you think yeah, this shouldn't be problematic. Now, that's not to say that it's impossible that Getafe will make life difficult for Real Madrid. There have been a few very high-profile games between the two sides before where Getafe have come to the Bernabeu and made life very, very hard indeed. But, on the face of it, this is an easy victory. Before we look at that game against Getafe, it's well worth reflecting on Real Madrid's comprehensive victory in the Champions League midweek. Los Blancos going to Istanbul and beating Galatasaray by six goals to one. And I'm not sure anybody expected it to be that comfortable for Madrid. No. I mean, right up to this goal from, from Isco, nobody expected it because actually um, Galatasaray had started reasonably well. I thought Real Madrid didn't look entirely comfortable. But what we saw after this goal really was that then Madrid were able to, to re-encounter some of the football that they had last year. They were, they were that little bit more direct. They were much more based on the counter-attack. They found more space. And, and I think that does pose... Um, once again, some of the questions that we've been asking since the start of the season, which is what exactly is Madrid's style going to be this year? Because, of course, Ancelotti's been, been evolving Madrid into a, into a slightly more patient, uh, slightly more technical approach, a slightly shorter game. But when Madrid are given space and the chance to, to run counter-attacks on people, they're, they're really very, very good indeed. And the temptation, I mean, this is a brilliant goal, by the way, the temptation um, from Madrid's point of view might well be to say, well, let's go back to doing this then and let, let's try and base the game on this. But I think what Ancelotti wants to do is to make sure that Madrid aren't caught out the way they have been, not just last year, actually, perhaps the last couple of years, against teams that have defended against them. And I think one of the reasons why Madrid haven't taken that final step from the semi-finals to the final of the Champions League has on occasions been because actually when they confronted teams that have defended and waited for them, they haven't had that little touch of subtlety to find a way through. Well, let's hear from one of the Real Madrid players who featured in Istanbul. Gareth Bale came off the bench to make his Champions League debut for Real Madrid and afterwards spoke about it. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it's amazing. I think um, I wanted to be playing Champions League this season and uh, yeah, to, to hear the music at the start of the, uh, of the game and then obviously to come on and, and, and do well and finish the game off like we did was, uh, was, very, was very pleasing. I think I'm not too sure whether the score reflects the game. Uh, they're a very good team. I think they started the game off well, but I think as soon as we got the first goal, it kind of gave us that confidence and uh, knocked them back, and uh, we were able to push on from there. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, this year we we want to go all the way. We want to win the uh, we want to win the Champions League, and uh, yeah, it's good to get off to a good start. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, obviously I played 60 minutes on, on uh, the weekend and 30 minutes against, again tonight. So it's, it's it's all about building my fitness up to get as uh, fit as I can, as quick as I can. So, um, but I felt good out there, and uh, hopefully I can I can carry on getting fitter. Gareth Bale speaking after that victory in Istanbul in the Champions League. Let's look ahead then to the game against Hetafe and just see where we are injury-wise, if you like. We can bring you some images from Real Madrid training on Friday morning. Very, very good to see Rafael Varan back in training. Yeah, I think he'll be uh, really quite an important uh, addition to the team when, when he's fully fit. Um, Madrid have actually been, I think, quite vulnerable at the back so far this season with, with Sergio Ramos and Pepe. I don't think it's just about them, and it's one of the things that we insist on quite a lot on this programme, that when we talk about defensive solidity, it depends also on, not just even on your deep line midfielders, but on, in terms of the, it depends on the way the whole team is set up. But Pepe and Ramos were both um, quite often exposed, I felt, against Villarreal. I thought Carvajal was as well. And so the return of Ram will, will obviously help that because I, I think he gives them a little bit of serenity at the back that, that perhaps Pepe and Ramos don't always have. The other injury news, obviously, is the two, is the two left backs. We think they're probably not quite ready for this weekend, Marcelo and, and Cohen Trao, who both came back from international duty with injuries. Now, I must admit, I'm very short short short-tempered with, with people who complain about the, 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 the impact of the international week on clubs like Real Madrid and like Barcelona and like Manchester United. So, well, that is why you, you have international players. That's, a, that's, a, a, an, that's a part of the impact of having international players. And it, to treat that as if somehow it was a problem, it's not a problem. It's a good thing that you've got international players. It means you're stronger. If it means you then expose yourself to a few more injuries, that's just the way it goes when you've got... And you've got a big enough squad to get round it. I sense a rant coming on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry, stop me now, yeah, before okay. I start ranting. Uh, yeah. Before you start ranting, 
amazing. Let's uh, instead hear who Sid thinks is going to play for Real Madrid against Getafe on Sunday evening and get his starting line-up, Sid. Well, let's start with that left-back position and say the, the absence, we, we assume still the absence of Marcelo and, and Coen Trao means I think Arbeloa at left-back. That obviously by definition clarifies the situation at right-back. It will be Carvajal, not Arbeloa. Of course, Nacho is still a possibility, so that's the other, the other, the other um, potential variation at the back four. I think the front four picks itself. I think I think Bale, Isco, Ronaldo and Benzema is almost certain unless Angel Di Maria plays. But I think Madrid want Bale's debut out of the way as quickly as they can. I think he wants that under his belt as quickly as possible and I think he'll start. Then the question mark becomes the deep line midfielders. Modric will be one of them. My doubt is whether the other will be Kadira or Iadamende. I'm going for Kadira, but, it, but it, I'm not completely convinced about that. Well, that's who Sid thinks is going to be starting for Real Madrid on Sunday evening. Um, let's focus a little bit then on Getafe, our uh, opponents on Sunday night at the Santiago Bernabeu. They haven't made the best start to the season. Four games, they've only managed to win one of those. It was the last game they played against uh, Osasuna. How have you seen Getafe so far? Well, I, was, I, I saw them against Almeria and they got a 2-2 draw and they felt relatively pleased by it. But to be be honest, I thought Almeria were comfortably the better side. Um, uh, I saw that game at the stadium, and, and one of the noticeable things about it was that they there was a kind of there was a kind of boredom factor about Getafe. It was almost as if they it, it, it was as if not just the fans, but as if the players were bored, as if they weren't very excited about what they were doing, as if they're in a bit of a rut. And I, I think they're a side that plays some quite nice football, but they lack that sense of competing for something. They lack that sense of of kind of really going for teams and sometimes you watch them and you think well if they had a good striker they might be a good side because they've got quite a nice element of creativity in the line of three behind the forward but they're a relatively average team um, within the Spanish league and I, I think they'll be safe but I think they will be finishing anywhere from eighth down to kind of 16th, 17th. Well it's Real Madrid Getafe on Sunday evening. Let's take you through all the matches which are kicking off in Spain this weekend and get Sid's all important predictions. Friday night is a big one for two teams struggling at the bottom. Uh, Osasuna without a point hosting Elche. Yeah it is a big one you're right. Um, I'm going for a draw in that. Uh, Real Sociedad hosting Malaga on Saturday afternoon. I have doubts about this, but I'm, I'm going to go for Real Sociedad because I think they're the stronger side, but I just wonder about the, champ the impact of the Champions League and the injury to Granero and so on. Uh, Almeria looking for their first win of the season, hosting Levante. And they'll get it, Almeria. Uh, Barcelona travelling to Vallecas to take on Rayo. Who've conceded 12 goals already this season. Barcelona have scored 14. I expect the balance to be more or less that kind of level as well. Uh, Barcelona to win that. Uh, by the lead against Atletico Madrid on Saturday evening, 10pm. I say this without joking, Atletico Madrid the best team in Spain at the moment and Atletico Madrid will win that. Uh, midday kickoff in Seville, the hottest city in <laughs> Europe for Real Betis against Granada. Yes, there's that famous La Liga planning, um, Betis. Should be a scorcher that one. Celta Vigo against Villarreal. Draw. Uh, the big one for us at the Bernabeu, 7pm kickoff on Sunday evening for Real Madrid against Getafe. Real Madrid. Two teams in desperate need of a league win meet at Mestalla Valencia against Sevilla. Four defeats in a row for Valencia and I know this is bold given that Sevilla is second bottom, but I'm going to go for a Sevilla victory in this. Okay. And the Monday night game could be an attractive one at Cornea El Prat Espanyol against Athletic Bilbao. Draw. All right, that's who Sid thinks is going to win, lose or draw in Spain this weekend. Uh, just time to get your score and score predictions for the Real Madrid game. I think it'll be relatively comfortable. I think Getafe will open up and Madrid will pick them off. Um, I'm going to go for 4-1 with another Cristiano Ronaldo hat-trick and Gareth Bale to get the other one. Sounds good to me. That's all we've got time for on this edition of The Match. Hope you've enjoyed the programme. Hope you enjoy the game on Sunday evening. From Sid and myself, it's adios.